Welcome to my newest segment, <laughs> Beckham's Dark Tunes, where we will be checking out Nostalgia Critics Dark Tunes, where we watch, where we check out if they are dark and twisted or nice and happy. <laughs> So watch it if you dare. Ah, 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 ah. Yep. We're doing dark tunes now, guys. By the way, let's watch some dark tunes. Let's, let's watch with the very first one. Pluto goes to HLL? Huh? Wait, why is Pluto go there? Pluto, why are you going? Why is, what does Pluto get? And while we be watching Tom dies and meets the meets Lucifer, let's watch it. You may realize I have kind of a love for dark twisted cartoons, and a lot of that may be because I grew up with a lot of dark twisted cartoons. Now I'm not talking about the ones like Batman or ones that were meant for older kids. I'm talking about the ones that were meant for little little kids, and they probably should have been made for little little kids. And I well, love the hell he's out cut. Of I how much they He's off to 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 shadow. Oh. Felt a little tougher. So I'm doing a series reacting and reviewing them. We're gonna analyze how creative they are, how dark they are, and if the dark twisted tone was warranted. So join me in taking a look at some dark tunes. <laughs> Ever wonder what would happen if Pluto went to hell? Of course Disney did. Pluto's Judgment Day is a 1935 cartoon that has traumatized many of us. There's actually several videos that have been made about this cartoon, and you can see why. It scared us as children in all the best ways. Let's take a look. Right away, the music should be a first clue. It's just like an organ, a huge gothic organ, but then like they try to sneak in the little happy-go-lucky Mickey Mouse music. Yeah, you don't mind like, it. We're not that scary. We're, we're fucking scary. Screen. It's like that Time Magazine cover with Is God Dead? Except, you know, with a Disney cartoon. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You'll notice too, the colors are very muted, like something's already up. It's not a like a usual Mickey Mouse or Pluto. It's a jerk. This is also when Walt Disney was still doing the voice of Mickey Mouse, and if you notice, Disney has a lot of dark stuff in it. So I have no doubt he was 100% fine with everything in this. Well, you're gonna have plenty of more on your Judgment Day. It's not very often you hear Mickey say Judgment Day, is it? <laughs> I like the idea of the dream kind of being like this transparent reality. Like, it's familiar, but it's still something that's not quite real. It would have been so easy just to have this whole thing drawn like normal and you just reveal at the end it's a dream, but no, they kind of start off very early on. This is very odd. Part of this could be too that they're trying to emphasize that this is a dream because it's kind of the down blue philosophy of as long as you have a happy ending you can show kids whatever you want and I kind of believe this is proof of that. Come on outside mom, knock your block off. <laughs> People in the 30s have the best laughs. <laughs> Look at the cats in the background in the trees. You can see there's already sort of this foreboding, foreshadowing of stuff that's gonna happen. It's gonna be bad. It's like already preparing the trap. It's so creepy and most little kids wouldn't notice that. That's something that's more for the adults. You'll notice the backgrounds are getting a lot darker too. They're slowly but surely luring you into the dark stuff. Oh, that looks welcoming. Could be where Laddie got the cave of wonders. <laughs> Entrance is so scary. Just a tongue wrapping you up, luring you in. It's oh, and I love it. Oh, that is fucking horrifying. Yes. Even his tail. What's his tail gonna do? This was a long time to literally be kept in the dark for like a kids' cartoon. You don't see this much black. And slowly but surely, every creepy thing is revealed. It's a very unnerving thing for a kid to watch. Yeah. You're on trial today for the crimes that you've committed. I'm almost wondering if this was meant to be Pete, because he has kind of that Pete <laughs> yeah. look to him. Maybe they were like, no, he's got to be Mickey's enemy, not Pluto's. I like the 
Jerry is literally on the fence, like how <laughs> cats usually are. They like to sing on the fence, but at the same time, there's clearly nothing about their judgment that's going to be on the fence. The telephone book's a nice touch, too, just showing nothing's going to be fair in this trial. You solemnly swear to tell the whole truth out of any school of hard as you were thinking so help you? I think that's how most kids hear the swear-in process. <laughs> but they don't actually hear what they're saying. Look at the lighting against the background. It really just heightens the shadow he has. I'm the jury. Oh, that's a great face. That's such a creepy face. The short has what I like to call flexible lighting. If you actually look at how the lighting is supposed to be in every scene, it doesn't make sense. Sometimes it's above, sometimes it's to the side, sometimes it's really bright, sometimes it's really dark. But it's all just to emphasize the shadows, the angles, and it does such a great job of it. You don't care. You just accept it. Also, it's a dream. Who knows what the hell light is like in a dream? He kissed me under a steamroller, and then he left me flat. This cartoon does legit have me asking how wow. much cats is Pluto killed. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Alright, so a lot of hand-drawn animation has what I like to call eye porn. Like, uh, it's I, very much the I, most I, eyes, and there's usually a reflection of another character in there. And it always seems a little odd, because eyes in cartoons are already huge, they're already so expressive, so to go in that close is always so weird. But in something like this, it's meant to be uncomfortable, and you literally cannot invade personal space more than that. <laughs> oh, this ain't great. It's funny because growing up with cartoons like this or Tom and Jerry and stuff where they did like blackface and things like that, I never realized it was supposed to be a racial thing because it was so exaggerated. I couldn't even recognize it as a racial thing, so maybe sometimes not even take as a good thing. Something clever they're doing, I never noticed, the rocks at the bottom, they're very much trying to make this look like the stage of a theater. There were still, like, uh, vaudeville shows that were going on, and they usually had the lights at the bottom of the theater. Even the lighting very much looks like that, like that's where the lighting is coming from. So, so it's a little touch, but it, it, it actually, a little touch, but it, it, it actually very clever. Jerry, no, you're you know, sometimes a cartoon can introduce you to a new term as well. Like, I never knew the term swinging door justice until I saw this, and they don't even say it. You just, that's what you want to call that. And again, it, it's very subtle, but it's very clever. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is just so mean spirit. Yeah. <laughs> There's always something so creepy about not only a character put in danger, but everybody's cheering it on. It's just yes. oh, yeah. so horrifying. I love it. Hotsey, I believe they also used in Casino Royale for very different purposes. <laughs> Maybe not that different. This is another Disney yeah, Even the fire's box. coming to life. Little, like, either raindrops or usually fire that would uh, come to him with these little personalities and they would try to destroy something. They do a little dance. It's cute. It's horrifying, but it's cute. <laughs> See, now that's that's super sweet. That's how they can get away with it. They put a super sweet, super nice ending, and they can show you whatever they want. And you can usually tell when a cartoon needs to do that, because the ending is usually very short. The happy ending is super quick. They obviously want to focus on the dark, creepy stuff. Uh, you can tell that was the intent of the director and the animators, is that they wanted to scare the shit out of you. And what's so funny about it is that it's not like it's a lesson that super beneficial to kids. I mean, it's a dog learning not to chase cats. Uh, I guess you could argue it's kind of about bullying. I mean, Pluto's just chasing this cat for no reason. Mickey even calls him a bully. No, I, I feel like this cartoon is super creative, super creepy, uh, but the imagery is so imaginative, and the shadows are wonderful, and uh, the different lighting of these creatures. And there's something really to be appreciated about, you know, the dark side, because, you know, we always try to put kids in these you know, in very happy environments, and rightfully so, but, you know, every once in a while, it's good to have that little dab of just flat-out scary, and I think to a little kid, this is flat-out scary. Every kid's gonna have sort of a different tolerance of it, I think, but 90% of the Disney cartoons are just Mickey, Donald, and Goofy just getting the hijinks, and it's bright and colorful, and it's funny, uh, and then you just have something like this. Like, like, it's a little introduction to something darker, something harsher. To me, it's very welcome. I think it's something where a kid can choose if he or she wants to watch it again or if they want to go to the more happy stuff. When I was a kid, I loved watching this, and it did scare me. 
Uh, but that was part of the fun. I liked being scared, but I also liked the bright, colorful stuff, the funny stuff. But, but I, I, this was very different to me because I didn't see it that much. And I think that's part of what was so attractive about it is that it's something I was not seeing often. And they definitely sneak in this stuff a lot in Disney. I mean, people love to talk about the stuff that traumatized them uh, in Disney cartoons, Disney movies and stuff. So, uh, But it's rare that uh, almost 100% of the movie, short, whatever, is scary. Nowadays, we get a lot more of that. We get, like, Nightmare Before Christmas and things like that, where it'll just surround you with the dark imagery, which is fantastic. Uh, but back then, it was more rare. So I think when you do see that in a Disney cartoon, it is a little bit more jarring. But that's also part of the fun. It gives the option for kids to look into the imagination of the dark side. For kids, I think it's very okay to allow that uh, in small doses to see if they like it or don't like it, and then they can sort of choose from there on out, uh, you know, what they enjoy. So I found I really liked being scared as a kid. So uh, this cartoon was a lot of fun. So yeah, Pluto's Judgment Day, 1935. Highly recommended whether you're a kid or an adult. It's scary either way. <laughs> Hey everyone, I got a couple of these lined up. If there's any particular cartoon you want me to look at as being... And that was the first episode of Dark Tunes. Hmm. That was very good. Dark. But, 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 very good. Seeing Pluto have a dream where he's being judged and about to die... That's, that's messed up. Even for Disney standards. Even for Disney standards. Walt Disney, RIP to you. But what were you thinking, man? I, I don't know. But, yeah, let's watch the next. After this, we'll, we watch Tom Dies and Meets the Devil. Yep. Tom, Tom, Tom from Tom and Jerry dies and he go and he meets his maker. And he meets.